question three from the 2022 Advanced Higher Physics Examination of the SQA. A golf trolley consists of a frame with two identical wheels as shown in figure 3A. Each wheel can be modelled as a hoop and five rods as shown in figure 3B. And that's the diagram of it. The mass of the hoop is 0.38 kilograms. The radius of the hoop is 0.14 metres. And the mass of each rod is 0.07 kilograms. And for three marks, we are asked to show that the moment of inertia of the wheel is 9.7 times 10 to minus 3 kilogram metres squared. So to do this, we have to break up that object into uh, objects where we know we can easily calculate the moment of inertia of. So we can see we're going to have a hoop and we're going to have rods. So we look at a relationship sheet, we can see the following. We can see that the point mass, the moment of inertia of a point mass, a radius r from the centre of rotation is i equals mr squared. Now we're looking for the uh, rod which is going about its end. So one of the uh, moment of inertia we can use is this one here which shows you the rod about its end. So that's one there. So we've got five of those to work out. The moment of inertia of the rod being one third times the mass of the rod times the length squared of the rod. Now what about the actual moment of inertia of the hoop? Well, when you think about it, the moment of inertia of a hoop is really made up of all these little point masses which surround the wheel. And the moment of inertia of a point mass is this one here, I equals MR squared. So really, if we sum them all up for round the hoop, we just really get the moment of inertia of the hoop equals the mass of the hoop times the radius of the hoop squared. So we're going to use these two expressions for moment of inertia to work out the total moment of inertia of that cart's wheel. And remember this one, we have to multiply that by 5, since we have got 5 of those there. So let's go and work it out then. We have uh, the following, we have the moment of inertia for the actual hoop. So moment of inertia for the hoop. And that was going to be equal to simply mr squared. So we plug in the values for that, then the mass of the hoop is going to be 0 0.38 kilograms. And put that in. Multiply by the radius squared, the radius of the hoop is 0 0.14, so 0 0.14 all squared. And we've now got the moment of inertia of the hoop. Do that in your calculator, and we get 0 0.0074. And remember the units for moment of inertia are kilograms for the mass and radius squared is going to give us a length squared is m squared. So we've done that one. Now what about the moment of inertia of the rod? Well we know that's going to be equal to one third the mass of the rod times the length of the rod squared. So just once again plug in the numbers. One third times the mass of the rod is 0 0.07 kilograms multiplied by the length of the rod and the length of the rod is the following, it's going to be 0 0.14, because when you think about it, that's going to be the radius of the rod as well, so it's going to be 0 0.14, the same as the radius, and we have to square that to get our answer. So we plug that into our values, and we get a value of, for one rod, 0 0.0046 kilogram metres squared. Now to work out the total amount, total moment of inertia of the wheel itself, the golf cart wheel, we just simply add up the moment of inertia for the hoop. But we have to remember we've got to multiply by 5, since there's 5 rods in the wheel, 5 times the moment of inertia of the rod. So that's going to give us a value of 0 0.0074 plus 5 times bracket, is going to be 0 0.00046 and we do that in a calculator we end up with a value that the moment of inertia for the wheel is going to be equal to 0 0.0097 kilogram meters squared we can put that into standard form scientific form we can see it's going to be 1 2 3 9.7 times 10 to minus 3 kilogram meters squared. Question 3 continued part B. The golfer cleans the wheels of the trolley by using a jet of air. The wheel is raised off the ground and the jet of air exerts a tangential force of 1.2 newtons on the rim of the wheel as shown in figure 3C. 
This causes the wheel to rotate, and for three marks we're asked to calculate the torque acting on the wheel. Well, we know that the torque acting on a wheel or anything like that is going to be torque is going to be equal to the force times the value for the radius. We can see down here we have the torque, the force acting down here, and there's the radius there, and therefore we're going to have the torque equals the tangential force times the radius. So we'll plug in the numbers for that one then. The torque is equal to the tangential force, which is 1.2 newtons, and we know, we know that the radius of the wheel is 0 0.14 of a metre. So if the, the torque is going to be 1.2 newtons times 0 0.14, it's going to give us a value of 0 0.168 newton metres. And if we round it up to just two significant figures, the answer is 0 0.17 newton metres to two significant figures. 3B part 2. A frictional torque also acts on the wheel. When the 1.2 newton force is applied, the wheel has an angular acceleration of 16 radians per second every second. And for four marks, we have to determine the magnitude of the frictional torque. Well, we can find the net torque, that's T net, that's just simply equal to the moment of inertia times the angle uh, the angular acceleration alpha and we know from a previous question that the moment of inertia of the wheel is going to be 9.7 times 10 to minus 3 and it's going to be kilogram meters squared multiply that by the angular acceleration which we're told in this case is 16 radians per second 16 radians per second every second so if we work that in a calculator we end up the value of 0 0.1552 and of course units for torque are the newton meter so we can put that into two significant figures and say that the net torque is 0 0.16 newton meter so that's the torque which is causing that angular acceleration but if we take a close look at what's happening to the wheel a simplified diagram of it just leave out the spokes we know we've applied a torque like that and the torque we applied was 0 0.17 newtons there's going to be a frictional torque acting the opposite way so to find the net torque all we have to do is take the applied torque and subtract the frictional torque so our uh, summary equation would be the following it would be the net torque torque net is going to be equal to the applied torque take away the torque due to friction. Now we're after the torque due to friction, so we take it over the other side, the torque due to friction is going to equal to the applied torque, take away your net torque, just by simple equation work as shown there. And all we have to do is put in the numbers now that the frictional torque is going to equal to your applied torque, which we knew was 0 0.17 newton metres, and take away the net torque, which we worked out there was 0 0.16 newton meters so the frictional torque according to this must be the following 0 0.01 newton meter so that will be the value for the frictional torque question three part c the golfer now cleans the other wheel on the trolley this wheel has a small stone stuck to the rim and the angle of loss to the wheel increases and the small stone flies off tangentially, the rim as shown in figure 3D. Now we've got to explain in terms of forces why the stone flies off the rim. Now we take a look at a simplified diagram of the stone on the rim, just ignoring the, the spokes for the moment. What keeps that stone in a circular motion is the force of friction which gives rise to the centripetal force. It's the force of friction which gives rise to the centripetal force. So therefore we can say the following, we can say that the force of friction, we'll call it F, is equal to the centripetal force, Fc, which is equal to mv squared, v being the tangential velocity of the stone, and at squared, divided by r. But we also know that since v, the tangential velocity, equals omega r, we can change that to become m omega squared r squared upon r, which simplifies further to give us that the the centripetal force arising from the frictional force is m omega squared r. Now, if we have an angular acceleration, if the angular acceleration is going to be, say, constant, a constant angular acceleration, 
that must mean that omega, the angular velocity, will increase. Now, if omega increases, you can see from the expression that the centripetal force has got to increase. Now, if that centripetal force becomes too much, it, it overcomes the value for the force of friction, then the stone will fly off. You see, the centripetal force, Fc, must always be less than or equal to the frictional force acting on it. If that centripetal force needed to keep the stone in a circular motion becomes bigger than the natural force of friction, the stone will fly off. So that's basically the reason for that one. The angular velocity will increase due to the fact that the wheel has an angular acceleration. So the centripetal force will increase, or the, the force, the centripetal force needed to keep it into a circle will have to increase. And if the force of friction is not sufficient to be equal to that frictional force, then the stone will simply not keep its circular path and fly off in a straight line.